Um, now, in accordance with uh, Standing Order 38, a motion to adjourn the House is deemed to have been made and seconded at this time. Therefore, the question is that this House do now adjourn. The Honourable Member for Vancouver Quadra. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I asked a question uh, previously about Canada's tourism market share in our industry and talked about our the concern that the government's tourism strategy is uh, inadequate. And I, so I'm pleased to have the opportunity to continue to, to make a few more points at this regard. Um, it's a good thing that the government uh, has put forward a tourism strategy, but unfortunately it is a very disappointing piece of work. Uh, when I attended the Canadian Tourism Industry Association's uh, large gathering here in Ottawa not that long ago, one of the key spokespersons there said that the strategy kind of reminded him of a university term paper. Now that's not to put down university students, but it is a commentary on the amateur nature of this strategy. Uh, no measurables in it, really no specific actions in it, no clear criteria, no way of knowing uh, whether the strategy is, was working or not. Uh, this was uh, not, a, not a very impressive piece of work, shall we say. Uh, but this is a very important industry. Uh, the tourism industry contributes uh, with 617,000 jobs in Canada in, uh, in 2010, and a lot of these are small business jobs. Uh, there are 180,000 tourism businesses in, in Canada, so a very important industry, and it deserves, uh, it deserves better attention uh, than that tourism strategy. I was disappointed that the, that the minister let that one go by. Um, we saw in a couple of days ago the opening of a new office in Beijing by the Canadian Tourism Commission, and that's a good thing. But it also reminds us that this is a government, because of its diplomatic gaffes, because of its prime, our Prime Minister insulting the China and the Chinese leadership uh, for over the course of three or four years, uh, and creating a, a really uh, a negative climate and atmosphere between China, our one of Canada's most imp important trading partners, hugely growing economy, uh, hundreds of million or hundreds of thousands of uh, tourists interested in Canada. We actually lost the opportunity to have the assured destination status. Uh, Canada's approved destination status, that is, it was only approved in 2009, though it had been planned to be approved in 2006 after years of work by the Liberal government. So we had a, a failure that has cost our tourism businesses hugely uh, by having this, this approved destination status delayed for almost four years. Uh, how much did, and actually Canada ended up being one of the last developed nations to get the status from China, whereas when the Liberal government was first negotiating for it, we were in line to be one of the very first uh, developed countries to enjoy the status. Last year, that status in increased our tourism visits from China by about 50,000 visitors. So think of the years of lost opportunity for our tourism operators uh, that uh, it callously and carelessly, the Prime Minister managed to squander that opportunity uh, by his, um, maybe an experience, but his uh, diplomatic failures. The, uh, but there, these are not the only challenges for our tourism industry. The government's policies have, have been a series of blunders and diplomatic gaffes. And what that has done is contributed to a uh, to a decline in international market share for Canada. Although we have all the opportunity in the world to have a thriving, uh, to be very competitive, we're number one in, in branding. Uh, we have fallen from number seven to number 15 in actual tourism, uh, international tourism overnight visits. So our, our industry deserves better than the Prime Minister doing photo ops uh, uh, in China, it, it deserves better than a, a second-rate strategy. It deserves a real focus. These are real people, real jobs, real businesses, uh, and the 
government has to do better. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Industry. Well, well thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Honourable Member for her for her speech. Uh, I note that uh, in regards to approved destination status, uh, uh, even in her own words, she uh, points out that that was just yet another thing that after 13 years in power, mostly in majority, the uh, Liberals were just about to get done. Uh, if they'd only had another 13 years, Mr. Speaker, perhaps they would have actually gotten around to it. Uh, uh, but then it's something that this government actually delivered on. And uh, um, she pointed out the many benefits uh, that uh, have resulted because of the, the, the Prime Minister's actions in that regard. Uh, Mr. Speaker, our government's number one priority is jobs and economic growth. To that end, we've created over 600,000 net new jobs here in Canada since the depths of the recession. Tourism is an important creator of jobs and economic growth in this country, and so I'm proud to be here today to speak about the actions that this government has taken to support Canada's tourism sector. In 2010, overseas arrivals to Canada reached 4.5 million, a 6.9% increase over 2009 arrivals. Canada received almost 232,000 travellers from China alone in the first 11 months of 2011 from January to November, an increase of almost 24%, or 44,420 travellers over the same period of 2010. We can expect continued growth from this market due to the government's efforts in obtaining approved destination status with China announced in 2009. With approved destination status, Canada's tourism industry is marketing directly to consumers and group tours, accessing a market of some 57 million people who travelled outside of China in 2010. This government supports the sector in many ways, including marketing, to Canada, marketing Canada to the world through the internationally recognized work of the Canadian Tourism Commission, opening, operating national parks, supporting the hosting of international events, facilitating access and investing in infrastructure. Last fall, the Federal Tourism Strategy was launched in its coordinating federal efforts related to tourism, enhancing the federal government's role as an effective partner with industry and other levels of government to improve the competitiveness of Canada's tourism sector. In fact, the Prime Minister, who is currently in China, just launched the Canadian Tourism Commission's new 2012 Tourism Marketing Campaign in China. With the FTS, Canada is poised to take advantage of tourism opportunities. For example, in Brazil, the Canadian Tourism Commission, Citizenship and Immigration Canada and Transport Canada, respectively, have st stimulated demand for travel to Canada, enhanced visa processing capacity, and concluded a new air service agreement. As well, the CTC launched its Signature Experiences Collection to recognize small and medium-sized businesses that exemplify Canada's tourism brand. Mr. Speaker, Finance Canada and the Canadian Revenue Agency are engaging with representatives of the tourism industry to examine the operational design and administration of the Foreign Convention and Tour Incentive Program and to explore the feasibility of changes that would improve the program's effectiveness. Going forward, Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development Canada will create a suite of online tourism development tools for use by community-based organizations. These are just some of the proactive measures that we've taken in support of Canadian tourism. By implementing the federal tourism strategy, the government will be more coordinated and responsive in the areas of greatest importance to the competitiveness of Canada's tourism industry, a sector contributing nearly $74 billion in revenues to the Canadian economy in 2010, of which $15 billion is export revenues, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Vancouver Quadra. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, it was very nice to hear all of those statistics about the tourism industry. I mean, Wikipedia or Google can provide that. Um, one of the, I mean, here, here is a, a complete uh, and woeful uh, failure on the part of this Prime Minister and this government on, uh, in terms of tourism. And I'm going to speak on behalf of British Columbia. We have a wilderness tourism industry that brings in over a billion dollars a year and provides 2,200 jobs, a very important industry. It's built on our brand called Supernatural British Columbia. Well, what did the Prime Minister and his Minister of Natural Resources say? 
that they called the interveners at the Northern Gateway uh, Joint Review Panel hearings radicals and adversaries. But who were some of those interveners? Those interveners included many of the tourism businesses that are concerned about the potential impact of an oil spill. I quote, the biggest concern is the threat of a spill on the coast. We think that a spill is inevitable if there's that much tanker traffic going down Douglas Channel and a spill would have irreparable damage to our industry. Not being respected, actually being in The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Industry. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And of course, the, uh, um, the Honourable Member's characterization of what the Minister of Natural Resources said is completely incorrect. He was not referring to every intervener. Uh, what he's saying is that we have to have a process that makes sense, makes sense to balance the needs of the environment with the needs of the Canadian economy. And I would ask the Honourable Member, uh, you know, what she thinks would happen if we don't have the option of selling our natural resources to other countries around the world? What happens to the Canadian economy? What happens to jobs in the tourism sector across this country if Canadians themselves can't travel around, around the country because they can't afford to, because they don't have jobs? Mr. Speaker, the, 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 the economy in Canada, we've created 600,000, over 600,000 net new jobs, Mr. Speaker. Um, you know, the, the Liberals stand in the way of that at every opportunity, and this is just another example of that.